Hi, today we're in Essex and we're visiting a hide owned by Roger Hans. Roger is a very well-known photographer. I've known his name for 40, 50 odd years in the camera club circuit. And I first met him over 20 years ago, I think. I've gone to his hide because he gets a lot of starlings coming to it. And I don't get starlings at my hide at all. So it's something I really want to have a go at. And he's been getting wonderful pictures of them fighting here. So that's mainly my target. And he's got a lovely location for it. This is an orchard. These are all apple trees, very low down trees, and lots of birds tend to come into orchards. The hide has a drinking pool in front of it. There's always a problem with drinking pools when you're away from the house and outside the reach of a hose pipe. Water is very heavy and carrying it in very hard work. So Roger's come up with a solution. At the back of his hide he has two very large water containers and the water that runs off the roof of the hide goes into the gutter and down into the water containers. Saves a lot of carrying. The hide is big enough for two people and you're using your tripod which I always prefer rather than using a beanbag on a shelf. The aperture is covered in this wonderful clear view netting. It's very good stuff clear view netting. You can see through it very clearly but the birds can't see into the hide. And as well as the aperture at sitting level there's a low down aperture where you can get your ground level shots and you always need a bin. You've got to have a mouse or rat proof bin to store the food in. There's this one which is a bit more rustic. So what I do then is, is put some paste along there, the starlings will come onto that. And if I concentrate it to these two bits here, you'll get them fighting, squabbling and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I'll put that over there because the more food we got out initially, to bring them in, once we get them all coming in regularly, we can restrict it to where we want. Yeah, okay, and it's the starlings fighting that I'd be particularly interested in. Yeah. And as soon as we get in the hide and close the door, the birds start to come in. A great spotted woodpecker, a male bird, At the moment this bird's bill is nice and clean but of course as soon as he starts to eat that suet uh, have bits of white paste on his bill and I shall stop filming or stop photographing at that point. I only want pictures when the bill is clean. Roger tells me that the starling and great spotted woodpecker sometimes squabble. Didn't happen when I was there. A robin posing nicely and a pheasant not my favorite bird they eat too much of the food goldfinches were quite common I hardly get any of my feeders these days and these are a species that squabbles a lot here we go two of them just coming up off one of the posts now I started off with the starlings just taking portraits because I want to make sure I've got something in the bag. They are very attractive birds, I like starlings. Lots of tits coming in for the food, long tail tits, blue tits and grey tits. So Roger, I've been to your hive before maybe 20 years ago and this doesn't seem to be the same place. No, the hide I had before was at Ipswich and again that was on private land and, and I and, and another photographer shared that for about 20 years and initially when we first went there it was very very productive but after a while they started to build up sort of areas around there and, and you know it just got sort of so, so it was uh, less and less birds coming in. It's the same with my hide, the main feeder hide. Ten years ago, the best hide I've ever had with a variety and numbers of species. Now it's hopeless. Just blue tits and great tits. It's really collapsed. And you get a lot of starlings here. I never get starlings, so that's the main thing I'm concentrating on. 
All of the video is taken with the Lumix G9 Mark II and all of the stills pictures with the OM-1 camera. The autofocus on the G9 Mark II is much improved for stills photography and perhaps in the same ballpark as the OM-1, but I just can't cope with two different camera systems. I start to get mixed up. So by adopting the policy of use the Lumix for the video and the OM-1 for the stills photography, I don't get mixed up then. I don't keep pressing the wrong button. So that's what I'm tending to do. And all of this slow motion video is in 4K, 120 frames per second. I haven't tried the HD yet. I would like to get around to that. I love watching birds interact like this. And you get the opportunity to see what's happening when you're doing it in slow motion. Notice when a bird goes up on that higher perch, they tend to pose much better. They're away from the food. These birds that are low down, they tend to have their heads down rather a lot. But as soon as a bird goes up there, it's a much nicer posture. So for the stills photography, those are the pictures I was trying to take when they went up onto one of the, the higher posts. The lens I used throughout the day was the OM 150 to 400 mil. All the stills pictures will be taken at 1600 ISO. Shutter speed when you're doing a portrait almost doesn't matter. It can be a very slow shutter speed. The fighting shots, yes, you need to go a lot faster. And my aperture here would be wide open, trying to throw the background out of focus. When they're down on the lower ridge here, they don't pose so nicely. So this is where I want them, doing this bird small in the frame because I'm really trying to get it in flight as it goes from one perch to the other. And here, shutter speed, 2500th of a second, will do nicely. Using Pro Capture, and when it came to the action, I was using Pro Capture just about all of the time. So this is the shot that I was really trying to get, the squabbling pictures. We'll start off with a bit of video. The problem is when they're facing each other like that, it's no good. They've got to be sideways on. So both birds are in focus. I can't have one bird in front of the other. And you can't go in and start taking portraits either because then they're too tight in the frame. So you've got to do them about this image size. And look at the way he shoved that bird off. And just a few seconds later, this is a different clip, almost the same thing. Pushes him off with his foot. Okay, now we're getting something. That's what I'd be after, as those two birds went up sideways. And it's no good trying to follow them with the camera going up. You're never going to keep up with them. Many years ago on Kodachrome 64 film, I photographed a starling singing. This bird is singing now, but when they go into full song, they are spectacular. They're not great songsters, but the posture they take up is wonderful, with all the throat feathers sticking out. I'll just show you how a starling looks at normal speed, rather than slowing it down. You can see they're very jerky, they're on the move all the time. And they're very good at this interacting, but at normal speed you can't really see what's happening. Let's move into stills mode now. That left hand bird has taken up a wonderful pose. But I've managed to clip the right hand bird. Now this is where it's no good, they're facing each other, one bird's got its back to the camera. They've got to go sideways on. This might be an opportunity. Now bearing in mind I'm doing this with Pro Capture, so I don't have to hit the button until after the event and I'm shooting at 50 frames per second because that gives me continuous autofocus. Here we go, this is the sort of thing I'm after. Side was on, both in focus. And again, just as they go up off the post, I don't want them to go too high, I'm gonna miss them. And I want them a bit closer together there. There's a bit too much of a gap between the two birds. I have shutter speed here, I actually went slightly higher than 2,500th of a second. I was getting around 4,000th and 5,000th of a second. 
and closing the lens down just one stop to give me that extra bit of depth of field. I've no idea how many pictures I've taken today, but it's a lot. I filled up two cards. One of them is 128 gig. I think the others are 64 gig. I'm now on my third card. Most of the pictures are going to be rubbish. I'm using Pro Capture all the time, 50 frames per second continuous focus. But just a few seconds ago, two birds went up vertically side by side and straight away I said to myself, I've got it. I've got the picture. Didn't look at the back of the camera. You could just tell from the position the birds were in. And then I checked the back of the camera and I did get it. When I got home, I did check to see how many pictures I'd taken. It was 8,780 pictures. It took me one hour and 10 minutes to edit those using Breeze Browser to get it down to about 360 pictures. That's in the first edit. And then I had to go through them again to try and reduce it some more. Thank you to Roger for a super day. I've put a link to his website and his YouTube channel in the description under my video. This is my favourite image from the day, although I did get a lot of others that were very similar. Thanks for watching.